This is dedicated to Pedro. I don't have much to say, but if you follow my step-by-step -step instructions on this video, all of your wildest dreams will come true. Today we're going to draw Napoleon Dynamite, and it's going to be easy. I mean, what'd you think it was going to be? Hard? Gosh! By following the process that I teach you in this video, you'll be able to break an image down into shapes, and that makes it easier to draw. And if you're good at drawing, you're going to get the girls. Well, that might be a stretch. So go grab a pencil and some drawing paper, because you don't want to use printer paper. Ugh, gross, freaking idiot. Are you ready? Let's begin. Step one, draw the small trapezoid shape. Step two, draw the lines around the trapezoid shape. Step three, extend those lines to form the top frame of the glasses. Step four, complete the shape for the glasses. Step five, add the nose shape. Step six, add the shading that you see. Step seven, add the eyes. Notice their placement in the frames of the glasses. Step eight, add the three shapes that make the mouth shape. Step nine, give Napoleon some teeth. Step 10, add the lines that I just added. Step 11, complete the forehead shape. Step 12, close the face shape. Step 13, add the ear and notice that it goes from the top of the eye to the bottom of the nose. Step 14, add the shape for the hair. Step 15, add the neck. Step 16, add the clothing. Hey everybody, welcome to the shading tutorial. I have a recommendation. I recommend that you watch this one time through and then go back and uh, pause it at different places uh, for uh, where you feel comfortable stopping it while you shade. And uh, I am using a method called cross-hatching, and I'm just using a regular number two pencil. And I'm looking at the reference image, which I posted on the screen for you. Uh, and, you know, I'm just trying to mimic the shadows that I see. If you notice, um, there's a somewhat complex shape that's happening on uh, the cheek to the left. Um, you see the, uh, the, the shadow that's left from the glasses and you see a dark shadow right by uh, the hairline on the uh, side of the face. Um, it gets really dark beneath the ear uh, and uh, on the uh, inner part of the ear. That seems to be the darkest part. The hair, as it goes across, it gets lighter. Um, the forehead, it is dark on one side, light on the other. Um, you know, even the glasses are really illuminated um, on both sides. So. Uh, we got a pretty difficult one to do, but uh, it's very doable. Um, you know, I, I recommend that you really observe the image, though, and, um, you know, practice those tones maybe on another sheet of paper uh, before you uh, apply them. But, you know, don't go crazy. Don't, like, you know, the way that you learn this is to mess up. I know you don't want to do that, but um, that's the truth in it. Um, you, you can practice a little on the side, but, you know, don't be overcautious. Um, if you notice what I'm doing, I am, it's almost like a printer. Uh, you know, sometimes printers go over things two or three times. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen, uh, well, I've seen old, old printers and, uh, <laughs> you know, I know, uh, how they, how slow they used to be. And it really gave me a chance to see the process. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen like an inkjet printer, but, uh, you know, it goes over the image a few times when it goes really dark. And, uh, you know, that's essentially what I'm doing, but with straight lines, straight and narrow lines. Um, if I wanted to smudge those lines, I will use a, uh, a blending stump or a paintbrush. Uh, but I can just build line over line over line, and that's going to give me the darker tones. Another thing that helps me go really dark is that pencil that I'm using. That's a 7B pencil. 
um, it's darker than a number two pencil. Yeah, v very handy to have. Um, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about the hair. If you notice what I did, I just did squiggles. I kind of mimicked the texture of his hair, and then I cross-hatched over it. And there's a big difference uh, between the two sides of the hair. And you'll see what I do uh, as we go further on. But um, I just press a little bit lighter uh, as we go over, and, you know, I leave more space in between. Uh, and I'm using the brush right there to kind of, like, smudge it over. Uh, and, you know, really neutralize it. But, you know, if you notice, and it might be hard to see because there was a glare there a second ago, if you notice, uh, the spacing is wider, and I'm pressing a lot lighter uh, as I go across the head. Um, I'm going to go back with the eraser in some parts, you know, just to uh, create those very, very light highlights. Uh, and, um, you know, really, it, it's something that, it, it's it's going to take you practice to do, but even if you're new at it, it is a it is a possibility to get it correctly. But um, you know, just watch, um, practice, and you know, uh, just have realistic expectations. Um, forehead, I'm doing some very delicate uh, lines. You know, delicate cross hatching. Uh, the mouth is very distinctive. You see a line underneath it, and also a line underneath the chin. Um, I'm sorry, more of a shape uh, underneath both of those. Uh, but, um, you know, the chin, it's pointy. The bottom lip, it protrudes. Uh, so you want to leave those strong shadows. And that gets almost as dark as the hair. Um, I am trying to create those gradual transitions because if you notice, with the exception of maybe the bottom of the nose... Um, the area, like right within the frames of the glasses, uh, the bottom lip and the chin, there's no real lines here. Um, there's just a really, really smooth transition. Um, if you really want to challenge yourself, go for that, that uh, shadow that's created from underneath both of the glasses. Uh, it gets very subtly dark um, on the lightened side of the face. Um, Obviously, you see which side is in shadow, but uh, there's an illuminated side of the face. And as it turns, you really have to look really closely to see that uh, it does get darker there. And that's what I'm filling in right now. There's a big difference between the two eyes in shading. Um, the one on our left is uh, darker, um, you know, quite obviously, but that's not to say that the other eye is not dark. You know, it is, but it's not at the same level. Uh, I'm talking about the shadowing around it, of course. I'm starting to put on my finishing touches. And, oh, actually, no, I have to do the clothing. But, yeah, I guess I am doing the finishing touches on the face. Um, and I'm just kind of trying to give the nose some shape. I'm trying to add that shadow underneath the nose. This was a really fast drawing for me. It was, like, uncharacteristically fast. I, I can... Uh, these usually take me like an hour, hour and a half. This one only took me 30 minutes. So sometimes you just get the shapes right away, and sometimes it takes you a while to figure them out. And it's a really mysterious thing, but it was kind of a nice surprise. Gave me a chance, uh, you know, to work on some other stuff, uh, which was nice. Um, the neck, I really didn't speak of too much, but, uh, you know, that's obviously uh, darkened in there. Um, I left it a little bit lighter than uh, what it was in the picture, uh, I'm noticing now. But that's okay. Um, there's glare there um, on the tie, but that's a very dark area. That's as dark as the, um, you know, as the darkest part of the hair. Just adding some tones to the shirt. The paintbrush is helpful with that. And I guess that's about it. Um, if this video helped you, uh, if you learned something from it, if you could hit the like button um, and perhaps share it with your friends, uh, hope you take a second to, subs to uh, subscribe because uh, you know I have one of these videos coming out every week, um, and I think as of right now I'm at uh, 260 videos on my channel, and about uh, more than 100 are these step-by-step -step videos. But anyway, thanks for watching today, and I hope that this helped.